Welcome readers. Today on Book Chat, joining me is my Buddy Reads co-host, Classy Green. We'll be discussing the audiobook version of the thriller title, The Last Sister by Kendra Elliott. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and thank you for downloading this month's Buddy Read discussion featured here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. If you're new here, every week we get bookish with book discussions, book review shelf bites, and more. If you're wondering, what is a Buddy Read? This feature is where Classy and I select a thriller or mystery title that we both are interested in. Then we have a candid conversation about that book or audiobook. We even discuss it in our Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, during a live chat. So grab a glass of wine or a cocktail, even a cup of tea or coffee, whatever it is, grab your drink of choice and settle in for this fun discussion. As always with book chats, there is a spoiler alert in effect. You've been warned. And of course, don't miss out on our movie adaptation fantasy casting toward the end of this podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support the podcast by sharing it with one book nerd friend or on your favorite social media space. That would really help me out and I appreciate you. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including the podcast after shows. You can also find Classy and myself on Instagram and Twitter. If you've read the book or listened to the audiobook and would like to contribute to the conversation, be sure to join the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group. I hope to hear your thoughts on this discussion. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. Hey guys, welcome back to another Buddy Read discussion. We've got a lot to cover today, so we're going to jump right on in. Joining me is the Buddy Read feature co-host, Classy Green. Welcome back, Classy. (laughs) Hi, Tamara. Hi, everyone. Hey. So today we are discussing the audiobook version of The Last Sister, written by Kendra Elliott, narrated by Cassandra Campbell and Michael Naramore. Apparently this is first in series and I didn't realize that initially. The audiobook length is 10 hours and three minutes, the unabridged version that is. And the release date was January 14th, 2020. And the publisher is Brilliance audio but before we get started classy is going to share the the synopsis with us so would you mind doing that classy absolutely three sisters secrets collide in a shocking novel of suspense by the wall street journal and amazon charts best-selling author of the mercy kilpatrick series 20 years ago emily mills father was murdered and she found his body hanging in the backyard Her young sister, Madison, claims she was asleep in her room. Her older sister, Tara, claims she was out with friends. The tragedy drove their mother to suicide and Tara to leave town forever. The killer was caught. The case was closed. Ever since, Emily and Madison have tried to forget what happened that night until an eerily similar murder brings it all back. It also brings FBI Special Agent Xander Wells to the Oregon logging town. As eager as he is to solve the brutal double slaying, he is just as intrigued with the mystery of Emily's and her sister's past. When more blood is shed, Xander suspects there's a secret buried in this town no one wants unearthed. Is it something Emily and Madison don't know or aren't telling? And Tara? Maybe Emily can't bear to find her because when Tara disappeared, she took a secret of her own with her. Okay. So if you are not a Patreon member, then you can't see the expressions on our face as we are talking about some of this book. So right. You're missing out on that part, but we are going to be as descriptive as we usually are. So you'll get, I'm sure you'll hear the tone in our voices as we talk about this book. So we did get this book uh, from a publisher in exchange for an honest review. And we are going to do just that as we always do. So I wanted to start off by talking about the title, The Last Sister. I don't know what the title's about exactly. How about you, Classy? Do you, do you know no. how it ties in? <laughs> okay. No. And now I kind of get what you were referring to when you were saying 
you know, we were, we discuss, we discuss the book, everyone, every once in a while, when it's really good, we chit chat, we tack, we text each other. This one we want, we didn't do too much about, um, but you did mention uh, about Madison and Madison is the last sister. So yeah. Um, well, she's the youngest sister, but I guess she's the last sister too. I, right. And I would consider her the last sister. Mm-hmm. I mean, whenever you just, whenever you're talking about a family, it's either the youngest or the last, that's my, yeah. the last child, you know? Um, so yeah, the title I think does not correlate or coincide with this book. I think they could have picked um, another title. I believe it was mentioned in the book. Okay. I believe it was because that's something that I always kind of look for. Like, will they throw in the title of the book in the reading? And I think I remember it, but I don't know where. Me neither. I don't recall it. And then at some point, um, I was confused as to which sister was the main character. Like initially, I thought it was Emily. And I think in the end, I still thought it was Emily. But for a while there in the center, it seemed like Madison had a lot of POV time. And I'm like, well, hell, is this Madison's story or is this Emily's story? Like, whose story is it? So that, what what do you think about that? Um, I felt the same way. And I think that might have been that red herring um, Miss Elliot was trying to throw at us because each one of them, as I read the synopsis, does have a secret. Well, each sister basically has a secret. Yeah. Emily, I mean, um, but Madison, they did give her a lot of POV. And I was confused because to me, her only um, importance up until the point where she got that, you know, her, her, a lot of her screen time, I want to say, um, she was good friends with, with Lindsay, which Lindsay is, um, one of the people murdered in the story. So I, I was confused. And then, you know, we, we learned a little more about Madison, but I was still confused because all she did was find something Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. She found, um, the watch that her father which was a prized possession and she was good friends with Lindsay and Mm -hmm. she dressed cute. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I was confused. I think Madison for me was the catalyst for us to find out stuff Mm. without exposing it to Emily. So Ah. by that, I mean how, you know, Madison would talk to one of the aunts while she was making coffee Right. And one of, you know, the little aunt that, you know, she's losing her mind a little bit. So we right. got a whole bunch of information. Through but aunt. Yeah, yeah, through that conversation. So I kind of feel like she was, you know, how in books there's like a plot device where we get info dumped in the way that someone else is learning about something. So instead of the author just like kind of just explaining it, we're learning with a character. And I feel okay. like that was Madison's function is to be the person learning everything. And I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. She discovered a lot of evidence. She um, learned things along the way. So yeah, I would agree. She was the catalyst. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it did become confusing with whose story is this? Mm-hmm. Um, because I still believe it is. I still believe it was Emily's, but like you said, your explanation does um, explain a lot of her role, Madison's role in this story. Yeah. So I'll agree with that. Yeah. And I mean, Madison, her character kind of changed a little bit as well. Like in the beginning, through Emily's eyes, she seemed like, and you said this, like kind of a bratty little sister. But I feel like eventually she didn't really feel so bratty to me, but she was kind of boring. And I think that was because of all the exposition that was going on um, 
But I don't know. In the end, I I guess, I don't know. I wanted to connect to these sisters in some kind of way. You know, I'm the oldest of three and we're all sisters. So I, th- you too. Yep. And um, so I thought, you know, I would be able to connect to the secret keeping part. And, you know, I just want it. I don't know. I, okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the oldest of three too. And yeah. all sisters, um, granted Tara was the oldest, which uh-huh. I think kind of maybe threw us a little bit, but I didn't connect um, to the sisters. Uh, I, the, now I did understand the protecting a little bit um, of, of Tara, but I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I think I do. I think I do connect with the the um, protecting of Tara uh, because who? No one wants their sister to be a part of the murder of their father. And I can't remember what age they were. So, and then to find out that your mother commits suicide right after that. So that's like so tragic. Um, But I did have a hard time connecting with them um, as characters. I I just kind of went willy nilly with them. Like, come on story, come on. But I didn't feel anything for anyone. Not at all. I kind of agree. So let me, go back to your comment about ages. I feel like these were the ages when the father was killed, just me, ba- based on me trying to, I guess, piece things together. So I feel like Tara was like 15 or 16 or maybe even 17. She was very close to 18 um, when she left. Right. Because they said 20 years later. Right. right. So she was definitely older. And I remember Emily saying, or Madison saying something about Emily being nine, nine years old at some point. And so obviously Madison was a few years younger than that. So there was a significant age, you know, gap between Emily and Tara, I think. At least five years, five, five to seven years. It's kind of hard to say exactly. Um, But as far as like connecting to the sisters, I was kind of with you in that I didn't really connect to them. And I could not understand, you know, being that they were left alone, you know, to kind of like fend for themselves. Of course, they had their aunts, but Emily and Madison should have been closer, in my opinion. I did not grasp why they were kind of now I know Madison said I didn't want to be hurt. So I block people off. But my God, woman, you're a full grown adult right now. If I find that my sister is hiding some important stuff from me, I'm going to confront you. I'm going to be right. like, why do you have this watch? What are you doing? I saw you outside. Did you, you know, I would not be lollygagging around. I don't understand that. I mean, sisters are closer than that. Even if you hate each other, I don't think. The way they hand, it was weird. It just didn't seem true to me. No. And you're 30 years old. You're right. not that, that 10 year old girl anymore. You know, right. you're still sneaking in your sister's room, going through her, her stuff. <laughs> you're still going through her stuff. And I thought that was the weirdest thing. You're going through her stuff and then you hear her come in and you hide and you come back in. And I think that's when I, I, I had already put in my mind that she's a bratty little sister and she's whiny. You're a full grown woman. And then, but I do, I don't know. I, 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 to end all, I had a hard time connecting with them and I don't know. They felt they led a sheltered life and I feel like they never grew up. And, and even though Emily married left, and returned, they still had that sheltered kind of, you know, feeling. And I get that, you know, that they, the aunt, the aunt and her mother, they were close, which I had a hard time with Madison. And, um, and I kind of get it now that I say it out loud that they, they lost that connection because the connection between the two sisters was the mom. And now that mom is gone, 
you know, that kind of like bond, you know, mom, cause didn't, um, Emily say mom, we, she, even though she was a little bipolar or whatever they wanted to say she was, she had some mental health issues even prior to the husband dying. Mm-hmm. Mom would do fun stuff with us. Mom would let us take off, you know, from school and we'd play. And then all of a sudden mom is gone and now we're stuck being raised by the aunts, right? Mm-hmm. And it was what three kooky. The, the the aunts were kooky. They were weird. They dressed alike. <laughs> and I was like, when I heard that, I'm like, okay, so maybe they're triplets. No, <laughs> they were just three kooky sisters. Yeah, and even yeah, they were just kooky. So here you have these two sisters who were are basically orphans raised by some kooky aunts in this town where um, they were. Supposedly rich. Them. Yeah, everyone hates they're, them. Kind they're of. eccentric. Yeah. You know, with um, a history of um, owning the biggest, what, logging company in the town that went broke. So it, I think she had a lot of storylines in, in the story. And she did try to connect them, but there was some kind of disconnect in that relationship between sisters. And I get how, why she tried to do that, because that's how that's why they kept the secret. If you have the sisters um, not having a connection, you're going to keep secrets. If you see, don't, if you I don't think, have a relationship with them, you're going to keep a secret. See, I think that's opposite for me. Really? I feel like if I don't have a relationship, it's whatever. I'm telling. <laughs> if I think you did something and we hate each other already. But if we're close and I'm going to keep your secrets to the grave and you're going to yeah. keep mine. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I just, I wanted to believe that relationship between the three of them or the two of them at least until, you know, and I kept waiting how long before Tara shows back up. And when she did, I was kind of not really satisfied with that meeting as well. It was disappointing. But can I go back to yeah. the relationship part? Yes. So even though they didn't have a close relationship. So if you hated your sister so much and you knew this secret, who would you tell? Would you tell the police that you think, I think my sister was a part of the murder of my father or I remember seeing... Because the case was solved, quote unquote, mm-hmm. I was um, was um, because in their minds, their young kids that the, the person who killed their father is in jail. You yeah. so it's like, who do you tell? I saw my sister out there when my dad, when the fire True. started. And then it's like, I saw, you know, so it's like, who do you tell? You can't tell the kooky sister, the, the kooky no. aunt. Um can't tell Tara Tara's gone like Tara what the hell were you doing there because she left and then um as a middle sister who is now the basically the big sister or the you know she's now the yes the older sister the middle sister is now really the older sister because Tara is gone so she's taken on the role of big sister who's trying to protect um Madison So, you know, it's like as adults, I don't think they would tell anyone. But honestly, I'm surprised as children, as a nine year old and six year old or whatever, the youngest would even have the. I guess what is the word I'm looking for, have the the insight to keep that kind of secret at that young at that young age. If someone says, Oh, what happened? How did the fight, you know, when you start asking questions, I feel like a six or seven year old would just say, not thinking that there was anything to it, but you just say, you know, oh, I saw Emily, she was out there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause they will slip up and say some things. Right. So I'm like, mama, well, how- mama was in the house. Tell him I'm not here. My mom says she's not here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> you're right so but yeah that I do understand but it just yeah and I think we are just thinking how we would think yeah and this, how we this would is those think. moments where <laughs> the author should get some good beta readers because it, the flow was not 
good here. I I was just waiting for that moment for me to just be like, yes. And I was just, but I, I, it kept me wanting to read because like you said, I was waiting for, I was waiting for this last sister because I, because at first it's like, is she dead? Mm -hmm. I almost thought she was the one body found in, in the park with Uh, crazy Alice. mm -hmm. That's who I thought until they said it was a black girl. Yeah. So, um, there was a disconnect for me, a big disconnect. Okay. So I do kind of want to switch gears and talk a little bit about um, Emily and what's his name? What's that? Xander. And Z- Xander. Okay. Special okay. Agent. agent. Special agent Xander. I, okay. Whenever I read these kind of books, initially, I prefer not to see a romance in these kind of books. That's just my preference. Mm -hmm. Um, If one comes about and it makes sense and it's believable, I will accept it. But in this case, I kind of felt like it was all of a sudden like love at first sight for them. Like they spotted each other and now we have a chemistry and I must protect her. And I just felt like yeah. it was odd in the it setting. Was forced. Yeah. I felt like it was a forced, um, it was, it, it didn't flow naturally. We had to constantly hear, um, Madison say, Oh, you could just see the sparks flying off of them. Oh, look at them. They get, they don't even know. I can see it. It's so obvious. And then even Tara mentions it. And then even the aunts mention it. And it's like, okay, you guys have thrown in romantic suspense into this mystery. And then we even had to hear from Ava, um, Xander's um, partner. She even had to say, no, you can't interview Emily because you like her. I could tell you like her. It's, you're too close to this, um, to this person. So it was, she didn't write it in a way that we could tell that those two liked each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I didn't, I kind of felt Xander you know, because he kind of mentioned how she was beautiful and blah, blah, blah. But as far as Emily liking him, I didn't see that except for through the eyes of Madison, the aunt, and Ava. Right. You know, but we had to hear from everyone else that Emily was attracted to him. See, okay. So at first, let me just say, when I thought this was a standalone title, I was kind of more accepting of them doing of the author doing it this way but the minute I realized it was a series um, which it didn't pop up on Goodreads for me right away until after I was almost done with it and I went back to look and I'm like oh it's series then I felt like it was done wrong and this is why I can give you a perfect example of a romance starting to be integrated into a procedural this feels like it's going to be a procedural situation right and that was Two Girls Down by Louisa Luna. Did you read that one? Yes. That one, right. You know. Well. Yes. You know, you, you get the vibes. They're not saying it, but you feel it. And you know, it's on the horizon, but they're both kind of broken. So who knows when it's going to come? Right. And I feel like it's just like any procedural on TV. Once the couple gets together, it's the end. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> So that is the exciting part is waiting for them to come together and you have to make that struggle hard. This was pushed so fast that I feel like I thought it was, you know, it had to be a standalone how quickly they were pushing this relationship through. Yeah. Right. Because he kissed her and said, when this is over, (laughs) I want to date you. Well, it's going to be over, you know, and it's like, oh. Okay, right. it's going to be over, click, 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 soon. Right. <laughs> At the end of this book. <laughs> right. 
And I mean, at the end of the book, they made plans. Oh, I'm going to go stay with, you know, Tara so we can be close together. And I'm like, what? I don't. So what are you going to do next then? If this is going to be a series, maybe they'll just be together and he's going to work with his partner. I I don't know. It seems like that means the main character is changing because I felt like the detective, what not detective special agent while they both had, you know, points of view running alongside. I didn't think he was the focal point. I didn't feel like it was going to be a procedural when I was reading this book. I didn't feel that <laughs> now that I know that it will be. Right. It's like it changed things in a not in a good way. Right. Because you're right. He wasn't the main character. So now if it, it this is going to be a romance and it's no longer because we thought it was Emily's story. But if this is going to be a series, a mystery procedural series, Xander should have been the main focal point of this story. And I didn't feel like he was. I felt like um, he was a supporting actor if we're going to go into movies. You know, yeah. that's what I felt like. He was a supporting actor to Emily. I agree. So, and I don't see where, if this is going to be a series, where is Emily going to be in this, in, in series two or three or four? I don't know. The story is over, in I my mean, point. Honestly, they can't ride shotgun. They're not in the same business. She doesn't have any experience. Um, that's why well, I feel like. you know what? What? Her husband. Used to be a cop. Yep. I wonder if they're going to, well, I don't know. We, we're getting, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but she did know some things. Maybe, Maybe they were, she was trying school. to drop little nuggets. Huh? Maybe she'll join the Academy or something. I don't know. I know. I don't know. I. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I struggle. I, I, I mean, yeah. And honestly, this looks, it looked from the outside like it was right up my alley. Like you see this amazing cocktail or dessert or whatever. The ingredients look right. It looks good. <laughs> you take a sip or a bite. You're like, oh, that doesn't taste right. Too acidic. <laughs> <laughs> As I drink my coffee because I'm tired. <laughs> Too strong. Yeah, yeah it, it, it really was. Um uh, like you said, reading the synopsis, I was, when you sent it to me, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is something th- that we we could work with. Now, I can tell you what I did like about this story. I did like how um, they threw in some history, you know, about Oregon, about Portland, and um, the the racism there. Um, and I kind of knew a little bit because I've heard it before, but, but for her to kind of go in depth about this, and uh, they had the little historian in town. I did like hearing about Shanghai because I've heard that term before, but I didn't like go and look it up. And she threw that in there. I did like the history. I did like yeah. learning new things. Um, and she wasn't afraid to break it down. Yeah. So I, that I did like um, learning something new about Oregon besides it being um, a hipster town. I didn't know or that state. Oregon was the only white only state. I mean, I'm like, what? Yeah. yeah. I, that, that, that I will say was the one, well, I say one, at least one thing I did like about this story is learning, you know, about how, and then how they had the, the bars that they would have where they would Shanghai these, these people who came to town looking for work. And I almost thought Isaac was Shanghai at one time. Is it Isaac? Was that the young boy? Oh, the kid, yeah. yeah. I thought something, okay, I feel like that was a misdirect um, with him because yeah. when he was, for example, you know, when he was um, in a, a restaurant and he saw uh, the special agent, he went up to him and said, hey, I seen old boy over here. And he's like, why didn't you tell the police? And he's mm-hmm. like, I'm telling you. So I right. I got the vibe that he doesn't trust the police. The police are racist. He doesn't want to deal with the crazy police. Right. 
but that didn't really come to fruition. <laughs> I know. Like he was it, they dropped the ball. She yeah. dropped the ball. She yeah, the ball. like the yeah, the chief hung or the, the sheriff or whatever, chief of police or sheriff, I don't know what he was, sheriff. He yeah. hung out with those guys, but he wasn't a part of those guys like right. that. Yeah. But my thing is is you're gonna tell me that this young boy knew something. Mm-hmm. That he didn't want to tell the police, not the mayor, right? <laughs> not the mayor. He didn't want to talk to the police because he knew that they were shady. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think you're right. That was a big misdirect right there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I have um something that I wrote down, and I'll see if you noticed it, but may, and I may be wrong, but I thought when they found um. Cynthia Green's body in the beginning when they found in the forest with Alice that she was 17 years old when she went missing. Mm -hmm. And then later on in the story, they said she was 19 years old. Did you notice that? I did notice, but you know, okay. So after you said it, I did notice that because they did say 19 toward the end. And I feel like 17 sounds right in my mind. Right, because they said a 17-year-old girl went missing with her, uh, she's on vacation with her parents, and I, and um, and then later on, they were saying she was 19 years old, and I was like, okay, somebody, some editing there, they missed mm-hmm. that, but uh, like you said, when you have audio, in this, I wasn't able to bookmark, if I was reading it, I probably could just, you know, document it or whatever, but I was just wondering, did you notice that little um, editing flaw as well. I didn't notice it first time around, but after you mentioned it, it makes, it feels like something that I've heard. I definitely remember 19 in the second time they talked about her. Right. Because I don't know. I mean, I know a few 19 year olds will, that will go on vacation with their parents and not to not say many. that. Not, yeah. Cause when you get to a certain age, you're like, I'm about done parents. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we go in Vegas or, and, and granted, you know, it's a long time ago. Well, not too long ago. No, it's not that long well, ago. Well, I mean, 20 know. years ago now would be the 90s. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I mean, even my kids. Late 90s. At a certain point when we would go on vacations and if they were still at home, can we just stay? You That's know, the they, window they, where they don't want to deal with you. So <laughs> then mm-hmm. if like a 28 year old or 27 year old. Yeah. I can see them trying to get a free chip with their parents. Thank you. <laughs> free meal, free travel. Yeah. Lodging. <laughs> yeah. 19 year old. Like I could be doing so much more besides hanging out with my mom in Oregon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, who wants to just go hang out in Oregon? I know. That's not any teenager's dream of vacation. Yeah. I can't remember where they came from. Were they in Oregon too? Was just another part? What whatever their um main city is there. I feel like okay. the Portland, I think they said they were from Portland. Right, because this town was Astoria. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I I think we didn't the main the murder. Do we need to discuss that? Well, let's okay. So let's talk about the murder and then talk about the Klansmen. <laughs> so <laughs> I gotta say, I feel like I figured out m- most of it before I got to it. Um, I I wrote down like when things like really gelled for me. So I think things absolutely gelled when Emily said she found the watch, when she said she found the watch. So I said, oh, so this is the same group. So when Emily said she found the watch, first I thought it's not one person. I thought it's a group of people. And then when she said she found the watch, I said, oh, they're back. They're back. Yep. (laughs) And then I'm like, well, why would they murder one of their own? That was my question. Why would they do that? But then they address that because I guess he was bad, but not that bad. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I did like how that came together. Like, you know, seeing, you know, the history, looking through the photos and then they start recognizing people and then they start recognizing, hey, that hand 
signal they're doing? Yeah, that was at Naval Academy signal. I was like, oh, I see what you're doing there, Miss Elliot. Yes. <laughs> and then with the watch, with the phrase on the back, they're like, well, that phrase is actually used mm-hmm. by. Right. It's like, wow. They're not, they're not wearing hoods now, but mm-hmm. they still partake. And then I think what Emily mentioned, she would go to these meetings where, with her dad and the guys would basically be skinheads, mm-hmm. she, she basically said. So, um, and the coins and, you know, the coins were dropped, were left with Cynthia, I believe. Yeah, Um yeah, because even Madison kind of remembered the coins that weren't money. And then that's when she, you know, she remembered those as well. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because when they brought up those coins and they did mention this later or the author did, I'm like, I remember that from like the Masons because mm-hmm. when I was a young buck, I was, I was very young. I dated this guy for a millisecond that was in the Masons <laughs> and he had this stupid coin. And I was like, what the hell? You're in like, some crazy shit right now i can't deal with you and he was crazy honestly he was crazy. um so i realized so i mean not not saying that all masons are crazy or anything like that but i just remember distinctly seeing this coin and i met some of the people he knew and i just got this real weird vibe so i'm like oh that's what triggered a memory for me mm-hmm. <laughs> that i had long <laughs> forgotten i'm like oh the coin <laughs> I know what that is. Oh, God. But, yeah. yeah. But that's about the time I um, figured it out, too, that, okay, I think, and and I kind of, well, we kind of knew it had something to do with race relation with Nathan and Lindsay being a a mixed couple, an interracial couple, Nathan being a black man, hung, and Lindsay being a white woman. Um, that we knew it had to be something racially motivated. So to find the watch in those those words, um, it, it did put things into perspective. Um, I think the thing that threw us is, um, well, not threw me, Emily, you know, the beginning of the story, Emily finds them. And I remember her, like, I think they mentioned where she um, basically used her dress or her apron I think because she was at work to to open up the door she didn't want to touch anything um so I was like what is she doing Mm -hmm. I mean granted she didn't want to put any fingerprints but I was a little thrown off because I I just wasn't sure because we didn't know her history about her being an ex uh a wife of a a a cop or well the ex of a of a cop so Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I did start piecing it together with the watch, um, the words, something else. Oh, when dad got angry at somebody driving behind the car. Oh, he called this black lady a, a bitch or something. Right. But it, it was some, but you could kind of, it was some other terms besides being a bitch. That, mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and then those crazy brothers, that they hired to kill Nathan. I'm just like, Oh God. There was just so much going on. Like um, finding out that the father and the mother had a very controlling relationship that the, the family and pretty much everyone in town knew that he was racist and had anger issues and yeah. no one said anything to them. They just let them think that their parents were happy go lucky. It's like, why would you, Oh, because you know what? Because it's okay if that you're racist. You're still a good person. Because isn't that what the the hairstylist said or the lady at the boutique? Mm-hmm. Your dad still loved you, and he and granted he did love her, but he was still a good person, even though he was a racist. Oh God, he was still a good person, you know, and he loved you, girls. Yes, even racists love their children. <laughs> right, but that's what that's but, how they justified. Yeah, really looking past or even the sister said as long as he didn't do this Mm -hmm. so you know they everyone accepted but it was only there were certain things he couldn't do he can hang he could call them (laughs) the n-word as long as he didn't do these things 
And I can't imagine that he would just go on forever in that marriage with his daughters not learning the same thing. Yeah. Well, the mom tried not to let him uh, take the girls to the meeting. And it looks like, well, we don't know if Tara went or not, but we do know Emily attended a meeting coloring. And she said she blocked out some things, which, you know, she she may have, but... It, some of the things in this story will just break it down or not believable in my point of view. Um, but I've never lived as a only white person, a white person in an all white town with these type of things. So I don't know. Right. But from my point of view of reading this book, something didn't gel right. The flow was not, it, it wasn't believable. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you. Um, I don't think it was, okay, I don't think it was bad per se. It just no. wasn't good either. Yeah. I just had much higher expectations. And again, and again, guys, you know, we've been reading these books for over a year now. I feel like it's been a, over a year. Yeah. So we and start we this outside of each other, you know, before yes. we came together with Buddy Reads, this was our, this is our wheelhouse. Yes. We love to read. So we're not, as we said before, we're not new to this. No, we are yeah. thriller mystery people. We love it. I yeah. listen to true crime all the time. Yes. I, I mean, so to me, <laughs> to us, <laughs> we feel like mm, we're not sold. No, I was not. And when I asked you if you were finished, and I knew this is how <laughs> we were like kindred spirits with this. We hadn't text each other at all. And I was like, mm-hmm. I already know. <laughs> I already know how she feels about this book. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you felt, but I was like, I already I know. So when I just did think, I'm like, it's been awful quiet. <laughs> um, it must not be good. <laughs> Oh, God, that's exactly how I felt. So I said, I had her for Tamara, and I'm like, I know we got to pick our cast. And I was just like, uh, so who are we going to pick? You're like, when did you finish? <laughs> I'm like, I finished last week. <laughs> you were probably like, and you haven't said anything yet? <laughs> no, I was like, wow. Like, I literally started, like, this past weekend. I started on Sunday. So we're recording on a Tuesday. So I started Sunday afternoon. I was like, well, okay, I'll get going. And I was doing my little diamond painting. I started doing that. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, well, I just sat there for a couple hours. And I'm like, oh, by the time I was done doing that on Sunday, on Monday, I'm like, well, I can finish it on Monday. But then things were starting to drag. And I'm like, oh, God, will I be finished? Oh, help me, please. I have to get this finished. And then mm-hmm. I, I did finish Monday night. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, it did. It 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 had some dragging moments. So, but okay, I All think right. I don't know what else to say. I don't know. I mean, yeah. it was. I don't know. I okay. almost wished it was a serial killer situation instead of like a racial situation. But yeah, it would have been. <sighs> You know, before, because I know we have to get to our narrator, Uh, another thing that I think she or Mr. Rec or dropped the ball on was Tara visiting um, her father's killer twice. Twice, yeah. They never addressed, why are you visiting the man, even though you know he didn't kill your father, because you know the mayor killed your father, why did you visit him twice? What was the reason behind that? Yeah. And the only thing they, that Kendra did, Kendra Elliott did with that was, that's how we find out where Tara lives. Yes. That, you know, it was like, I just saw so many moments where she could have went even further, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, it was just some other moments where she just dropped the ball. And I think that could have been, um, something greater or something that could have lifted this story. Cause that's what I was waiting for. Cause all of a sudden you find Tara, she's visited the killer of her, you know, her father's killer twice. twice yeah. And all we find out is that she's living a new life 
as an alcoholic with a dead husband, yada, yada, yada. And then they, uh, and then the author also threw in about Tara that she was sleeping with the old ass mayor. I'm like, why do, why, why? Oh my God. I'm sorry. (laughs) Y'all just saw that, but oh my God. I was like, really? That's all you could do? What, what the, why? Yeah. Now that, now that right there, the father should have killed. That yeah. was like, that wasn't even necessary. Mm-mm. She could have kept that. Like, what was the point of that exactly? I mean, they tried to say that because you, you got a free pass to not be murdered because you were sleeping with him. Is that what the, I feel like that's what was being said. Oh, you guys were sleeping together. So he, he told you to leave instead of killing you. But you were I'm young sorry. and scared. He could have told you to leave and you would have left. Oh. The way Thank he you. threatened your family, you would have left anyway. All right. You did not have to add that Greenberg was sleeping with your. You know how many men have hit on me? Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. She was just throwing stuff at the wall. It, it seemed like at the end, throwing stuff at the wall to see if it, it um, would stick. And I'm like, who read your book? I know. Which beta readers did you have? Because somebody should have said, Take this out, take that out, drag this out some more, delve more into this part, because I think it would have been a much better story. I agree. Yeah. I 100% agree. I mean, I feel like it had the the bones to be a really great story. It just wasn't executed the way it should have been. No. No. Okay. Well, I guess we can just... Leave that there for now. (laughs) We're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we are going to talk about the audiobook narrators. We are going to give our ratings. And last but not least, we are going to do our movie fantasy casting. Stay with us. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfdiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Okay, guys, we are back. Thanks for staying here. And we're going to talk about the narrators. There were two narrators, Cassandra Campbell and Michael Naramore. Classy, what did you think about the narrators? Um, As I told you before, Cassandra Campbell, um, she is one of my favorites. Well, she used to be. I've ran across some more who probably um, taken her place. After I listened to her voice again, I'm like, okay, she's okay. (laughs) Um, But I did enjoy her. Mm -hmm. Um, I think she did a good job with... um, the women's voices. Uh, I didn't even think she did a good job with the male voices. Um, she did a great job um, representing Madison being a little whiny. Um, the guy, what's his name? Michael Navarro? Mc- Michael? I mean, it's M I K A E L, but I think it's still pronounced Michael. Or McCall. McCall. Mc- McCall. I don't know. Yeah. Um, he, I did not care that much for. I felt like. You know what his voice reminded me of, and I and you're I'm a little older than you are. It kind of reminded me of those movies we had to watch as students, like um, science movies, and the narrator would be, you know, um, narrating whatever is going on in the science film. You know, hmm. I'll, I'll say, yeah, I I I just felt like he didn't have. God, and maybe his voice is more for a procedural, but I just felt like his voice didn't have the nitty gritty or maybe some of that. Cause this book, I guess the book was trying to be sort of dark, you know, with the, the um, clan and the hanging. And I felt like he stayed pretty even keeled. I don't think he kind of, I don't mm. think his voice, changed that much to me I felt like it was kind of flat okay and I didn't get um 
I didn't get the points where with him, it was like, oh, God, some excitement is coming or just a few times, not all the time. But I just felt like he reminded me of um, the narrator in some old science movies I had to watch. OK, well, all right. So with Cassandra Campbell, for me, early on, like that first day I was listening, I I don't know if. I just noticed it because I wasn't doing anything but putting diamonds on a canvas. (laughs) What? But I heard a lot of like mouth and breath, like her breath was kind of, I'm like, wait a minute. I hear a lot of that. And then eventually it kind of faded. And I don't know if that's because I got used to it. So I didn't hear it anymore or it was edited better or it went away or she stopped doing it. Okay. But I know at one point it was very, noticeable and I'm like why is she breathing like with Emily no with Madison a lot it was yeah it was almost like that sexy siren <sighs> you know yeah. kind of yeah yeah mm-hmm. so I'm like oh gosh that was kind of annoying to me um but you know like I said eventually it either faded or I got used to it I don't know which way it went but it went away eventually Uh, Now for the male narrator, I thought he was okay. I think that I liked that it was broken up by a different voice for him. I think that was good that we had the two contrasting voices uh, to break up the, (laughs) the two female voices from the same narrator. But I don't remember anything spectacular about his voice. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, my um, opinion of having Cassandra is one of my favorites, and and that's probably just because I've listened to more audio people, and and I was like, oh, she used to be one of my favorites, and now it's like, uh, she's okay. <laughs> yeah, taste, she's okay. You know, your taste evolves over it, yeah, over it time. So. Yeah. Just like when you were young and you thought, oh, nasty, sweet, really sickly sweet wine was good. Now you're like, no. Right? <laughs> That's right? disgusting. My <laughs> right. <laughs> don't give me any sweet wine. We're going to fight. Please don't. <laughs> uh, see, I still got to do sweet. I can't do red because of the tannins. But uh, yeah, but I find that I don't like it as sweet. I could do a little. Yeah. But I can't drink it, man. It's Chevy. It's like, oh, it's so oh. good. <laughs> oh, that's got to be <laughs> the worst. Oh. <laughs> so you, know, you know that's uh, communion wine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Right? Oh Look, oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> anyway, now I'm a connoisseur of wine, and I drink good wine. And your palate has uh, changed. Yes, it has evolved, just like yes. my my taste for books and narrators as well. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's rate this thing before we do our fantasy casting. I will let you do the honors, and you can start. Drum roll. <laughs> um, I gave it a three. I didn't hate it. Um, I didn't love it, but uh, I gave it a three. I liked it. Okay. Same. Yeah. I'm with you. I feel like um, our job on this podcast is to dissect the book and to look at it with a critical eye. That does not mean we hated it. And that's how I feel here. It was fine. Yeah. It was just fine. So for just fine for me falls right in the middle. So I gave it a three. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So then when I started doing the fantasy casting, I was like, oh, okay. Now that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's when it, it you begin to see some things. Did you know, excuse me, some authors go into much detail and you visualize your your characters or your cast immediately and then you get to something like this and you're like I I darn near threw some people together today. I'm just gonna be honest. Girl, me too. I'm like, I'm well, I re- <laughs> I remember them talking about um Tara having this blonde hair and then it was dark and short. That mm-hmm. was the thing that stood out the most. <sighs> but at this point, I mean that's why, you know, you'll see later. I just picked someone blonde because that's her natural color. 
mm-hmm. it's blonde hair. Right. Um, but other than that, I mean, I tried to pick people that were all over 30. Because right. they're all at least 30 years old, I feel like. Right. Um, and then I tried to pick people that I just think would fit in the roles. Although, I don't know. We'll have to see how we did. Because I did not think of Xander as a cute guy in any kind of way. Um, I was trying to make do with what I read. <laughs> Cause I'm like, oh, that's what. And she I did. said, if we're gonna make this movie, if if we're gonna make this movie, and I had to go, he's gonna be fine. Girl, look, y'all. She okay. Let's start. Let's start with him. Let's start with Xander. Go ahead. Tell him who you pick. <laughs> tell him who you pick. <laughs> I had to read this. Xander is gonna be fine, and Xander is Mr. Henry Cavill. Okay, look now. I'm visualizing the Witcher garb, very sexy. Hey! Superman. I'm like, that is not Xander, dude. That guy. (laughs) Told you what I did, right? Didn't I tell you what I did? I'm just throwing people together. You're like, who do I want to see on the screen? Thank you. Because last time we said it now, if if this goes into a movie, they're just going to go get some indie people and some people we don't know. They don't do this movie. I'm picking who I want because I want to sell tickets. All right, that will sell some tickets. His <laughs> body will get people in the seats. Yes, it will. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> so I went kind of polar opposite of that, and I picked somebody that looks kind of geeky, a little dorky, but you know, he's cool people. And that's yeah. Nathan Fillion, and you guys know him from like, you know, a bunch of stuff. He's been in everything. Y'all know who he is. He can show up at Comic-Cons and stuff. Ah, okay. So I'm not familiar with him. You're not? Oh my gosh. No, he looks familiar, but I can't. Okay. So I think oh. he was most known for, um, what was that show? Uh, Firefly. But I watched him the most on, um, what was it? Uh, um, Castle. He was on Castle. It was a, yeah. Yep. yep. Now I know who you're talking about now. Okay. Yeah, and now he's also on this show called The Rookie. I the like rookie. him as an actor. He's fun. I like yeah. him. Yeah, and he looks, in this picture, I, I don't think I've ever seen him with a shadow. Mm. He has a little mustache, you know, a little, um, he has a mustache, but it's a shadow. Yeah, I figured that yeah, make him look more distinguished. Pick a distinguished yeah. picture. Because okay. he's yeah. supposed to be a FBI agent, not looking frumpy. <sighs> Henry is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, my Xander. Okay, I like your Xander. My Xander is buying, is selling tickets. Baby. Your Xander is selling tickets. <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like Castle. And I I did like Castle when it was on and I've watched it and I enjoy Castle. So, mm-hmm. okay. All right. So moving on for Emily, who we think is the main character or we thought was the main character. I don't know. Uh, who did you pick, Classy? I picked Emily Deschanel. Um, and she is known from Bones. I can't remember her character name because I haven't watched it in a while. But she was um, the forensic something. She was, she was on Bones. Okay, she yeah. She was, I don't know what she did. But she, yeah, we we all know Bones. We know her. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm down for it. I like it. I thought it was a good pick, honestly. I think I could see her acting in that role. Um, so, yeah, I think it was good. Yeah, because Emily sometimes was a little cold. And, you know, from Bones, she 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 would sometimes be a little, because her social skills were a little off a, a bit until her and Bones, you know, came around to each other. She came around. And what happened once they got together? The uh, show went. Uh, <laughs> sure did. Same with Castle. They got together and the show tanked. I mean, yep. you put the couple together too soon, and it's like the kiss of death for, for procedurals. You can't do it. What are you doing? Nope. So, nope. okay. Let, okay. Let the struggle stay struggle. Yes. Let them just look at each other and fawn and keep having missed opportunities. That's what it's supposed to be. Yep. And when you're done, to call, ready to call it quits then you let them have their happily ever after. Yep. 
You guys listen to us. We know what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I picked Kate Beckinsale. Um, I think I mispronounced her name. Beckinsale. There we go. Yeah. There's no D in there. Um, so I just like how she looks. I like how she looks. I know she's played really hardcore characters. I can see her being kind of just fitting into this role. I can see her doing it. It's not like there was anything extra particular about this character that almost anybody couldn't do. Right. So right. I just I thought mean, she fit. Right. And I think they tried to say she was, oh, she was so beautiful. But then that was from the point of view of Xander, too. So, mm-hmm. um, and Kate is a beautiful girl. She uh, is beautiful. Girl too. And um, I agree. I can see her. Um, playing Emily. Mm -hmm. I like her. All right, let's move on to the baby sister, Madison. Who did you pick? (laughs) I picked Zoe Deschanel. Sisters! Yay! (laughs) Real life (laughs) and on the screen. Yeah, they're like, oh, two sisters. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to worry about them looking alike. Mm -hmm. Well, not all sisters look alike, but anyway, these two look like and I don't even think in the story that Emily and matter of fact Emily and Madison didn't look alike but oh well they look alike on my cast I think Madison and Tara looked more alike if I'm not mistaken I agree yeah yeah I liked it I'm like oh I don't think they've ever been in anything together that would be fun to see I think yeah um so I picked Alexandra Dario, uh, and I don't know her very well outside of like Baywatch and San Andreas. <laughs> um, okay. And I just, again, I just picked her because I thought she looked like she could fit into that family. Mm-hmm. She's attractive looking because I feel like all the girls in that family are attractive looking. Yeah. Um, I think that was like a staple for them. <laughs> and, you know, when you mentioned to me how bratty you thought she was. Yeah, I when think, I saw this pick, I was like, yeah, she I, has. She look. could pull it off. <laughs> yep. And I could see her in a tutu and some heels. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So let's move on to Sheriff Greer. We picked him because I guess he also had a good amount of face time. So who did you pick, Classy? I picked Jim Carrey. And the reason why because I know most people think Jim Carrey, um, comedy. I just felt like when I was listening to the book, he was like a keystone cop. You know, he, he didn't, uh, he wasn't up to date on any of, um, you know, the new things he was, uh, slow with, you know, just some of the, the newer, procedures and th- different things like that. He was a little gaunt. He was, you know, just kind of, I just saw Jim Carrey. I don't, I, I think that's probably the, the biggest thing that I could see, you know, like he could, I could just see the faces. He, you know, how he talked to his deputy, get your butt over here and mm-hmm. how he talked to Billy. And so I just saw Jim Carrey. Okay. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I think, I, you know, I think he could do it. Uh, definitely. I think he could do it. Um, and I just went with someone kind of obvious and by obvious, I mean, I picked Christopher Maloney and I mean, my goodness, he's been on law and order forever yep. since like yeah. 1999 or something. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like, clearly he can totally play a sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he could. <laughs> And that's a good picture, too. He might be typecast, but I don't care. I know he can do right. it. Right. Yeah, he can. Mm-hmm. That's a good picture, too, that you, you um, pulled for him. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Last but not least, let's do the baby, uh, the oldest sister, Tara. Tara Mills. Um, who did you pick? I picked Emily Blunt. And while reading this book, before Tara even came into the picture, I saw Emily Blunt. Gosh, her name, all these dang Emily's. Now that I think about that. Um, I saw Emily Blunt as the first Emily, as Emily, not Tara at first. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't know, I could just see her kind of being the the, the tough older sister. 
Um, but then I think when I started realizing the age of um, Emily and Madison, that Miss Blunt would probably be a better pick for Tara. So, okay. um, yeah. And I can see her being, you know, uh, well, she's already pretty thin in this picture, but, you know, how they said she was really thin. Because I almost thought she had cancer. Yeah, and that's what I thought. I'm like, is she dying? I'm like, yeah, what <laughs> that's what I thought. So I was like, I yeah. can kind of see her, you know, with her hair just bluntly cut and uh, looking gaunt. So, and instead, yeah. she's just an alcoholic, which was crazy. Yeah. Uh, liver gone yeah something (laughs) okay so for me i picked kate winslet no introduction required we all know her we should even as far back as the 90s we all know her yep um so i just really was looking for that stark blonde hair somebody that i think could play like the town uh the town slut as she was calling herself (laughs) (laughs) you know she was calling herself that okay Um, and uh somebody that i can just see saying bye to her family to try to save them i feel like she could pull it off and i could see her in the role i just feel like she could she could do it she's versatile very versatile yeah i i agree Mm -hmm. I think we both had some really good picks this time around. We actually do. do. (laughs) I I do. I think we were, I think, you know, I think we have good cast for each one. We could have, we got a Netflix cast. We have a Paramount uh, cast. Either way, I think, um, I think we're pretty even kill here. Yeah, I think so. So yeah. yeah, if they ever bought rights to this movie, I, I recommend our casting suggestions, people. If you need yes. us to uh, help you, you know, confirm the people or, you know, go over that with you and talk you through it, we are available. We are. <laughs> I agree. Yes. yes, absolutely. Okay, so that is it. That ends our discussion on The Last Sister. Uh, do you have anything else to add, Classy, before we sign off? None. Nothing at all. Okay. As, as always, it's a pleasure. Oh, as always. Meeting with you. It's mm-hmm. always a pleasure. Yes. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for today. If you'd like to talk with us about The Last Sister, you can find us both in the Shelf Addiction Official Facebook group. Until next time, happy reading. Take care, guys. Bye. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.